Okay, so everybody needs to put the data from example number one into their calculator. So if you've forgotten what that is, you press stat, okay, which is beside your left arrow, right below your delete button. And then you want to edit that list, so you're just going to press enter. Stat enter takes you to your list. Now, first of all, make sure that you have L1, L2, L3. If you do not, that means one of those has been unintentionally deleted. Um, and if you ever need to get that back, if you press stat and you number five is set up editor, okay, you press enter and enter, and then it will it will fix that. Okay, if you are missing one of your lists, then you could do that. All right, so um, years, time is almost always going to be your X, uh, or what goes in list one. So we've got zero through eight there in list one, and then we have uh, these numbers, 1.418, 1 Now, I saved this for the end because um, I want us to look at, before we um, actually do anything with finding a model, I want us to look at the data and just by looking at it, I want us to kind of decide which model might be the best fit. So what we need to do is we need to, uh, there are a couple of different ways to turn your stat plot on. You can go to uh, second y equals, and it gives you your options for your stat plots. Uh, we, of course, want to turn that on. We want a scatter plot. You shouldn't really have to change any of the other options. Now, before I automatically press graph, I'm going to adjust my window. Okay? Um, so my x min and my x max, look at where your x values range between. They range between 0 and 8. Um, so I'm going to do like negative 1 to 10. I do negative 1 just so that I can still see the, the y-axis. Um, and then for the y values, look at what all your y values range between. They range between 1.4 and 2.0, so I'm going to do negative 1, 2, 3, just to give myself a little bit of a, a cushion there, okay? Now, as far as the x, uh, s, c, l, and the y, s, c, l, that's the scale that tells it how often to put a tick mark. You really don't ever really have to change that. You can, uh, but you don't have to. Now we'll press graph and look at the data. Now, just looking at that, what kind of function does that look like would fit? Linear. Probably linear, okay? There's not much change or anything going on with that, um, but they say if you look at question A, it says use the first and last data points to find an exponential model of the form y equals a e to the dx for the data, how good is the fit? Um, <clears throat> so, you know, there's, they're, they're saying use an exponential, but just looking at it, I would probably do a linear regression. Um, now, let's talk specifically about what they want you to do. When they say use the first and last data points, they're not actually wanting you to go through in the calculator and do the exponential regression that is under your uh, stat calculate menu. Okay, there's an exponential um, that's option zero there. They're not asking you to do that. They're asking you to use the first and last data points to find a model. So they're wanting you to write this by hand. Let me show you how to do that. We've got the point zero, 1.418, and the last is eight, 2.001. Okay, so what we're going to do is we are going to plug in to that general model, y equals a e to the bx. We are going to plug in, first of all, that point 0, 1.418. So y is 1.418 when x is 0. So I set the equation equal to 1.418, put 0 in the exponent. So b times 0 is 0, and e to the 0 is 1. So that means that 1.418 is equal to a. It's that constant in front. Uh, if you recall, when we did exponential modeling, a was the initial value, or the value when x was 0. So that makes sense. So then I'm going to go and plug in this other point, okay, with the fact 
fact that I just solved for A, that that's 1.418, E to the B times 8, okay, so I plugged in my Y, my A that I just found, and 8 for X. Now I need to solve this for B. B is in the exponent. That means we're going to have to use logarithms somewhere down the road. But first of all, we have to isolate that exponential by dividing by 1.418. So 2.001 divided by 1.418. Bless you. Now, I'm going to round on my paper, but I'm going to keep that value there in my calculator so that I can keep using it. Okay, so that number 1.411 is equal to e to the 8b. How do we get the variable out of the exponent? Logarithmic form, the base is e, so that means we use the natural log. The natural log of 1.411 is equal to 8b, and then we divide the whole thing by 8. So, in my calculator, I'm going to do the natural log of the answer, I'm not going to round, close my parentheses, and divide it by 8. So that says 0 0.043 is my b value. So, the model that they wanted us to create is y equals 1.418 e to the 0 0.043 x. That is the model that part A is asking for. Now I'm going to let you finish out um, B through D here in a minute. <clears throat> um, but there are a couple other things that I want to talk about with these models in general. If you glance at example 2, part A says look at a scatter plot of the data and decide on an appropriate function to model the data. Uh, so let me just go over really quickly some general shapes that we need to be familiar with. I think everybody knows that a linear function is a line, okay, or it could be a negative line, okay, just wanted to make sure though. Uh, quadratic, you're going to use a quadratic model anytime your uh, uh, data makes some kind of a U shape or a rainbow kind of shape, that's going to be a quadratic model. Again, you should know these things already. I'm just kind of reminding you. Uh, cubic doesn't come up very often, but if your function or if your data kind of changes directions more than once, that's going to be like a cubic or, um, or it could be a quartic. Let me look at my list real quick of your options. Okay, we've got linear regression, quadratic, cubic, quartic, uh, natural log. Okay, remember what, whoops, um, a log, um, yeah, it usually goes below the x-axis. Now, it doesn't necessarily have to in order to use it, um, but it's any time your data increases pretty quickly at the beginning and then starts to slow down. That's going to be your logarithmic. Um, then the next one is exp, that's exponential. Exponential growth starts slowly and then kind of takes off. Okay, that's when you're going to use an exponential. Power, you really don't have to worry about the power. Logistic is related to exponential. Okay, logistic is related to your exponential. So Actually, a logistic model is usually more reasonable than an exponential model because, yes, your exponential growth or something may experience exponential growth to begin with, but anything in the real world is not going to be able to maintain exponential growth, like bacteria or a population. Okay, It may explode to begin with, but it's going to reach some sort of carrying capacity or uh, leveling off point where the, uh, the surrounding environment just can't support that much of a population. So a logistic model um, is usually better for real world uh, than just an exponential. Okay? Um, and then that last one is a sine 
regression that's trig, that's when you notice something um, where it oscillates or it has periodic behavior. Okay, so where it's, it's repeating a pattern, uh, that's going to be where you may use the sine or trig um, uh, regression. Okay. Right, a cubic is going to have kind of the ends go off in other directions, but a sine regression means that it's repeated over and over and over again. You kind of have a repeating pattern. Um, so I think, that, oh, no, one more thing, one more thing. Um, when you are doing one of these, say I'm doing the exponential regression on the data that I have in my calculator, okay? Now we found the model by hand using the first and last data points, but if they say use the data in the table um, to come up with this, uh, here's something that will be helpful when you're using it to predict. When you press exponential regression, instead of automatically pressing enter, okay, um, we want to store this in Y1. So press second L1, that's telling it where the X values come from, comma second 2, that's telling you where the Y values come from, comma, uh, remember we've done the Y1 thing before, vars over the Y vars, enter, enter, okay, so what that right there tells it is the X values come from list 1, the Y values come from list 2, and then I want you to store the model in Y1. So when you press enter, and it does the exponential regression, if you hit Y equals, you'll find that it has put that model right there through. Um, so, if you want to, if it says, um, okay, so it says like in part C, compare the estimate with the actual circulation. So, say I wanted to check and see how good this model was. Um, I could do bars over the Y bars, enter, uh, enter Y1, parentheses, let's say I wanted to compare the value for 1990, okay? So that would be year five, but five in parentheses, it's not going to multiply 101 by five. It's going to plug five into Y1. And so the model says that at year five, that's what the circulation should be. Okay? So that's how I want you to do it um, if that happens, okay? Or if they ask you to do that.